Jim, what do young people worship today? What do they believe? What do they hang on to? What do they hope for? I can't speak uh, for young people, but uh, probably uh, a guess would be the same things they've always celebrated, just kind of a, a joy of existence, self-discovery, uh, freedom, that kind of thing. Well, there's always been a generation gap in every age, but the gap now seems to be much more of a definite cleavage. The young people today seem to feel and think differently. Mm -hmm. What do you think has brought this about? So-called generation gap could be a result of larger numbers of young people. Uh, I think it happened after World War II. I think it's something like uh, over half the population in the United States now is under 18 years of age, something like that. Politically and philosophically, the young people now seem to feel very definite ideas about the establishment, mm -hmm. old systems of governing people, and, and moral attitudes. Yeah. When I was in high school and college, the kind of protest that's going on now was totally unheard of. At that time, to be a teenager, to be young, was, uh, was really nothing. It was kind of a limbo state. And I think it's amazing just in, in the last five years what's happened is uh, young people have become increasingly aware of the power and the influence that they have as a group. It's really amazing. Does it surprise you that there is so much revolt on the campuses of this country against Washington and its policies? It really surprises me because, as I, as I said before, when I was growing up and you know, when I was in school, it was, uh, that was totally unheard of. You know, students really had no power. But if you look back in history, uh, it seems to bear out the fact that every revolution has started with students and spread to workers. And uh, I'm not predicting that there's going to be a drastic turnover in this country, but uh, uh, all the indications are there. Life does seem to become more and more involved and complex. You know, we're becoming computerized and dehumanized in that process. That bugs me. I wonder how it bothers you and your generation. But there does seem to be a, a trend toward a return to a kind of primitive outlook on life, a more tribal attitude, and uh, I think it's a natural reaction to industrialization, but uh, unfortunately it's kind of naive because I think the future is going to become increasingly mechanized, computerized as you, as you call it, and uh, I don't think there's any turning back. It's just figuring out a way to survive and thrive in that kind of society. But I don't think there's any chance of, of going back. Look at it this way, too. The hippie lifestyle is really a middle-class phenomena, and it could not exist in any other society except ours where there's such an incredible surfeit of... Uh, goods, products, and leisure time. I think that's, that's the reason for it, because the generations immediately preceding ours had uh, uh, world wars and uh, depressions to contend with, and uh, for the last 10 or 15 years in this country, it's, there's time enough and there's, there's money enough to live kind of a flagrant, uh, outrageous lifestyle, which was impossible before. Jim, there's a line in your book of poems which reads, the cleavage of men into actor and spectators is the central fact of our time. Well, I think that's undeniable, but I wonder, hasn't it always been that way with society? I suppose it has, but um, uh, with mass media you know, today, it becomes more immediately apparent I think what I was concerned with in that book was the fact that most people feel completely void and helpless in 
controlling their own destinies or con controlling the destiny of human life. I think it's uh, it's sad. More people should be involved rather than uh, designating all these uh, powers to a few individuals. I think the average person, whatever that is, should should be a part of it somehow. And I, f I think everyone feels that events are just going on without their uh, knowledge or control. I think it's uh, one of the tragedies of our time. I, I suppose it has always been that way, but now it's it's just become so obvious, you know. Decisions are made for you in which you have no part of at all. I just lament the fact that uh, so many people are uh, content with living a very quiet, well-mannered, orderly life when so many um, obvious injustices, I guess, are, are going on and they seem to ignore it somehow or, or, not, or not care at all, just let it happen without ever becoming involved. I think that's sad. Jim, relevant to, to your theory that people should get more involved in life and thus enjoy it more, you have written a line of poetry which reads, The spectator is a dying animal. Now, isn't that a bit of a contradiction to what you've said previously? No, it's uh, it's concerned with that same split between the actor and the audience. To me, there's something incredibly sad about a bunch of human beings sitting down watching something take place. And just, when you think about it, I love movies as much as anyone else, but the, the spectacle of millions and millions of people sitting in movie theaters and in front of television sets every night watching a second or third hand reproduction of reality going on when the real world is right there in their living room or right right outside in the street or down the block somewhere I think it's a tool to Sonambulize or hypnotize people into a kind of uh, waking sleep. But I think the major uh, influence in uh, the next decade or so is going to be the people who are able to assemble masses, huge masses of people into one spot, as as we've witnessed in. Uh, pop festivals in the last two or three years I think uh, will be the, uh, the major influences on mass culture in the next decade. I think the uh, the rock music enthusiasts have created some of the probably some of the most exciting music and theatrical events on the planet. I think they're fantastic. So part of Generation Gap is the difference in what people like in terms of music. Now, this is something that uh, distresses me a little bit. It seems that the young people like all the same kind of thing. Now, I, I want more out of the young people than just that. Yeah, well, they're, they're being programmed by their radios. They only play, uh, the major radio stations, rock stations, only play 30 songs over and over and over 24 hours a day and it's been proven what you hear the most is what you like the most so there's really no choice involved someone is programming it so we are the victims of media mm -hmm. what everyone should say is the medium is the message and the message is me I mean, that's the answer is for everyone to uh, you're asking for an answer the answer is for everyone to stand up and say I'm me and be fully aware of that fact and let everyone else know it yeah. that you are yourself and express it 